Welcome to this webinar on how to publish a scientific manuscript in the Journal of Neurosurgery. My name is Jim Rutka. I'm the editor-in-chief of the Journal of Neurosurgery. I'll be providing you with my perspectives on how to get your work published in our journal. All manuscripts that are submitted to the Journal of Neurosurgery are reviewed by an editorial board. In fact, there are three editorial boards, one for each of our print journals. As you can see, each editorial board is relatively small. Yet they are comprised of experts in the field and they are highly academic neurosurgeons who deliver excellent opinions about your work. The other aspect that's interesting about the Journal of Neurosurgery is its sequential review process, which I'll be speaking about in a subsequent slide. We also have an online journal known as Neurosurgical Focus and its editor-in-chief is Dr. Marty Weiss since 1997. Neurosurgical Focus publishes monthly topical issues and has topic editors who review all of the manuscript submissions. However, the manner of submission to Neurosurgical Focus is identical to the submissions to the print journals. Now, back to sequential peer review. There's probably nothing else like it in the literature. Here are the names of some of the editorial board members and others who review manuscripts for the Journal of Neurosurgery. In this screenshot, you will see how I assign manuscripts to a primary reviewer at first, followed by a secondary reviewer who gets to see the primary reviewer's comments. If either of them is away, it would go to an alternate reviewer. If the primary and the secondary reviewer disagree with respect to the importance of the manuscript, it then goes to an arbitrator. The arbitrator delivers an opinion that then goes to the chairman of the editorial board and the chairman will then send the manuscript to me for final deliberations. So for example, in this screenshot you can see a manuscript that was suggested to be revised by the primary reviewer and the secondary reviewer, but by the time the manuscript got to the chairman it was rejected. However, all the information would come to me and I would weigh the evidence in balance and decide whether or not this manuscript should be accepted or rejected. You can review the current submission process online at the journal. However, you should know when preparing your work that we accept clinical series, laboratory investigations, case reports, case illustrations, historical vignettes, technical notes, and literature reviews. And nowadays, we are receiving many meta-analyses for the Journal of Neurosurgery. Just a word about meta-analyses, since this is becoming quite popular. We would like you to follow certain guidelines. So for example, you should follow the preferred reporting items for systematic reviews and meta-analyses, or the PRISMA guidelines. If you are submitting clinical trials reports, then follow the Consolidated Standards of Reporting Trials, or the CONSORT guidelines. And if you're submitting work, which is in the epidemiology world, then the Strengthening the Reporting of Observational Studies in Epidemiology, or STROBE guidelines, should be adhered to before submission to the journal. As you are preparing your work for the journal, please remember that your manuscript should be written clearly and concisely. In addition, it should be logical and consistent. Finally, the data should be convincing. It is extremely important that you write well in your manuscript because even the most novel and well-constructed study will be rejected if the writing is flawed. If the reviewers are struggling trying to determine what it is that your data mean, then there's a good chance that your manuscript will be rejected. Hence, write clearly and coherently. When sitting down to write, here is my suggestion. Begin with the results. The results are comprised of the data and your figures and the information that will then help you lead your discussion. It is in fact the results section that tell the story for you. The method section is rather mechanical, but you describe the experiments or techniques that you used to arrive at the results. Spend some time writing the introduction where you introduce concepts of your paper to the readers, but it's the discussion section where you synthesize everything, bringing it all together so that at the end you allow the results section to provide you an opportunity to tell the readers 
what it is that you discovered in your study that is novel and interesting. After you've done all of this, sit down to write the abstract. The abstract is extremely important because it's your opportunity to catch the attention of the reviewers and the readers. You may have other materials to bring to bear. And then finally, the title. Spend time thinking about a title that represents your work to the best level possible. I would also like to encourage you to spend time optimizing your figures. From these archival images taken from the Journal of Neurosurgery, you can see how nicely and clearly the data are presented. And these aspects of manuscript submission are extremely important. Make your data as clear and concise as possible. Also spend time thinking about how you're going to present your data. So for example, in this bar graph where you have numeric values on the y-axis and you have years on the x-axis representing various drugs over time, it's somewhat hard to understand what the trends are between the different drugs. But if you were to convert this to a line graph, what you will see is that drug D is diminishing in numeric value over time. And it's not so easy to see that from the bar graph data. So while the bar graph data may look more impressive in terms of visual appeal, in fact, the data are easily understood with the line graph on the right. Now, a bit about titles. In general, for the Journal of Neurosurgery, declarative titles are not allowed. So for example, if you wanted to use a title like the gene for KLF4 causes glioblastoma in athymic mice, that will likely be arranged to the following. The gene for KLF4 is associated with glioblastoma formation in athymic mice. Now, back to the abstract. The abstract can make or break your submission. Most reviewers and readers of your work will read your abstract first, so you should encourage them and entice them to open the other pages of your work. Accordingly, every word should count in your abstract, and there should not be any extraneous words used in this abstract. So what are the top reasons why papers are rejected from the Journal of Neurosurgery? There may be verbosity, or contrarywise, not enough information presented. The purpose may be unclear. There may be confusing structure or poor writing within the pages of the manuscript. There may be poor data presentation. Inappropriate statistical methods may have been used. Perhaps the most common reason why manuscripts are rejected is because the conclusions are not supported by the data. Your manuscript, while well written, may lack sufficient novelty to be published, or you may not be using enough references given the importance of the topic you are studying, or there may be too many references used. So try to use just the right number of references for the work you are writing on. Well, I'm a firm believer in the adage, less is more. In this quotation, those who have the most to say usually say it with the fewest words. I think all reviewers on editorial boards welcome economy of words when it comes to manuscript writing. So please try to say what you have to say with the fewest number of words possible. Well, when tackling manuscript revisions, what are some of the principles? Well, one thing to consider is whether you should resubmit your work to the same journal. If the reviewers are asking for an incredible number of revisions, it may be worth your while not to revise and send back to the journal, but rather think about another journal. You can contact the editor-in-chief if you have unresolved issues. But what you should do is prioritize the reviewer's comments. But don't treat the reviewer as an adversary. You can disagree with the reviewer without being disagreeable. You should do the work, or at least most of it, that is being asked of you by the reviewers. And wherever possible, shorten your manuscript. Sometimes you will spend as much time revising a manuscript as you did with the original submission. In any case, it's not just what you say, but it's how you say it. 
Here are some quotations. We have carefully considered the comments of the reviewers and would like to respond to them point by point as follows. In quotations, thank you for pointing out that we have mislabeled figure 3C. We have now corrected this on the figure itself. Reviewer 3 has suggested we shorten our discussion. Accordingly, we have removed paragraphs 4 through 6 on page 12. And finally, the reviewer has asked us to establish a new mouse model of cancer. While we agree this would be an interesting experiment, it is beyond the scope of our current study. So again, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. It's the wording that you bring to bear that will allow the reviewer, upon the revision, to know that you've done the work and you've done it in a conciliatory fashion for the most part. Finally, you might wish to conclude at the end of your revision with your cover letter. We would like to take this opportunity to thank the reviewers once again for their careful review of our study by attending to their many helpful suggestions. We believe that our manuscript has been improved significantly. Well, if your manuscript is rejected, what course of action should you take? First, what do you do if you think your study was poorly reviewed? Well, you can call or write to the editor-in-chief. You should, however, describe how the peer review process was faulty or inadequate. You should state precisely how the reviewers missed the point. You should prepare rebuttals to each of the reviewers' comments. And in the end, you may be invited to resubmit. At least, it's worth a try in some instances. However, it's the weight of opinions of the editorial board members that makes the most difference, even when finally discussing your case with the editor-in-chief. Well, here are some things not to do. Of course, scientific misconduct is not allowed. And by that I mean gift authorship, where authorship is granted to authors who did not provide much in the way of input to the study. Redundant publication, where information from prior publications is brought forward in the current submission. Plagiarism, which nowadays can be detected very readily with the use of software programs like Authenticate. Fabrication, where data is made up, is not allowed. Falsifying data represents, as well, scientific misconduct. And finally, if you have a conflict of interest, this should be disclosed at the front so that everybody is aware of the possible implications of this conflict with the submission of your manuscript. Well, we are indeed very proud of the Journal of Neurosurgery and its rich heritage and its legacy. We know you have many journals to which you can submit your work, but at the outset I would like to thank you once again for considering one of the print or online journals for the Journal of Neurosurgery Publishing Group. And finally, I would like to thank the staff in Charlottesville. Here we have some 21 dedicated and devoted individuals working tirelessly to make your manuscripts look as professional and accurate and important as possible. I do hope that the comments from this webinar have been helpful to you as you go about submitting your work to the Journal of Neurosurgery. I thank you once again for your attention.